welcome. I'm Michelle Anderson, the founder of Clarinet Mentors. Lots of clarinet players get in touch with me and say that they would like to have better tone on clarinet. Really, I think that's true for most of us. There's something about the sound of the instrument we really like, and we want to do what we can to sound the best that we can. Well, I was thinking it would be really handy for you if you had a checklist of all the different sorts of things that you need to think about when you're trying to make good tone. Now, of course, there are many things. They would loosely fall into the categories of how we hold our mouth, our embouchure and such, how we use our air, what equipment we use, body position. All of these things contribute to good tone quality. I wanted to create for you a checklist that you could sort of have on your music stand at home when you're practicing and just be aware of each of these things and from time to time go to that list and make sure you're on track. So today's video is going to present the first part of my clarinet mentors tone checklist and you'll see that what I've done is if you could download the checklist that you'll find in the write-up just below this video, you'll see that they do refer to other videos that I've made that might go into more detail than I go into in today's lesson. But for today, I will describe each item briefly and give you a sense of some of the kind of things you need to be working on for your best tone quality. The first section on the checklist that we're going to take a look at today is embouchure. In other words, how we hold our mouth and lips and teeth to make the best sound possible on the clarinet. The first item on the checklist instructs you to check the shape of your bottom lip and chin. This is probably the most important part of your embouchure. We want the reed to vibrate as much as it can, and this is where the reed touches our face. If we have a loose, flabby bottom lip, it's going to muffle the reed and keep it from vibrating. So our goal is to make this as smooth as possible, and I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see it better. We wanna pull everything down away from the reed. Now again, on your checklist, you'll see a link to a video that goes into more depth, but the quick checklist I can give you right now. A great way to practice this is simply to take a picture of yourself from the side so you can see what it looks like. What we wanna see is this curve a smooth curved in surface, yet when most people blow, they lose this shape and it gets loose and flabby. Let me demonstrate that. Here I am concentrating on pulling my lip and chin down. And as soon as I blow, it went loose and flabby. That's really normal. If you haven't trained these muscles in how to stay in that shape, they might not know how. So a great thing you can do is literally Pull it down with your finger when you play, and often you'll hear the tone clear up as you do that. You can hear how it gets clearer when I take the time to pull that down. That's step one on our tone checklist, and that can make a big difference to how clear your tone is and to how resonant it is. Now again, in my mini lesson today, step two says, do you have the optimum amount of mouthpiece in your mouth? Well, this is also related to how well the reed can vibrate. If we have just a tiny bit of mouthpiece in our mouth, we're only letting a tiny bit of the reed vibrate. If we put more mouthpiece in our mouth, the reed is able to vibrate more freely, and usually that translates into better tone for us. Now, every mouthpiece is designed a little bit differently. Some are designed to have a little more mouthpiece than others, so I can't give you an exact measurement, but I will say it's pretty easy to discover where that is on your mouthpiece, and that's simply by experimenting. What I like to do is play a few notes. If you're comfortable playing in the high register, maybe your high G up to your high C thumb and register key are good tester notes since they're very reactive notes. And I'll start with just a little bit of mouthpiece in my mouth, and then I'll put in a little bit more. See if I like it better or worse. Put in a bit more. At some point, you cross a line that I just nicknamed the squeak point, where you'll just get a horrible squeak, and you know for sure you've gone too far then. But my goal is usually to try and get as close to that squeak point as I can, because usually I find my tone gets better and better. Again, I'll turn sideways. It might be easier for you to see this. I'll start with just a little bit of mouthpiece. Sounds okay, I'm gonna put in a bit more. Now it's louder, but also I feel like it's coming out more easily. I'll put in a bit more. That 
that's my freest sounding one yet, and it really feels quite comfortable to play. Now, of course, as we put more in our mouth, our jaw does have to open a bit wider because the mouthpiece gets bigger. So if you've been used to playing with a really small amount of mouthpiece in your mouth, you may have to open your mouth wider. Now I'm going to put more in my mouth and see if the next one gets even better. Okay, clearly I just went too far. Easy to see. So even though my first one sounded pretty good and it felt okay, I definitely sounded better as I put more mouthpiece in my mouth. And over time, most people tend to slide toward the tip. So even if you're an experienced player, check on this. You might need to get back into more mouthpiece there. The third thing on our checklist is to have the corners of our mouth wrap more firmly around the mouthpiece. And again, there's a link to a more detailed video, but I want you to have the quick checklist in hand right now so you can check yourself how you're doing for the, your best tone. This is a step the I'm sure many people overlook. When we smile when we play, which in fact is the way many people were taught how to play, it does help give us this nice flat chin, which was pointer number one. But we sacrifice a lot of things. The best clarinet tone is really where we're rounding our corners in. One way to practice that is to start without your clarinet. Simply put a finger in the middle of your bottom lip, where the mouthpiece and reed usually sit, with your other hand, wrap the edges of your bottom lip around this finger, so you're actually trying to squish the sides of it. Now, although this makes my bottom lip kind of loose and flabby, which I don't want when I'm playing clarinet, it does bring my upper lip and the sides of my mouth into just about the perfect clarinet playing embouchure. So, I'm squishing this, now I'm trying to squish the sides of my finger with just my lip power. Ugh. If you make a sound like that, it really helps. Ugh. That will help you to get that feeling. That's what I want to do when the mouthpiece is in my mouth. Ugh. Now, you don't have to make the sound. It's just kind of fun to do so. Now, when we make this sound, one thing to watch for, and I'll get into this in voicing later, um, is that when our lips make this shape, we're used to saying the word, oh. And in fact, oh or ooh is a really nice sound to think of for lip shape when you're playing the clarinet. For the best tone, we want our tongue to be in the position it would be in if we said the letter he. So our tongue will automatically drop, and this can actually make your tone sound a bit worse. So I'm already spilling over into a later thing on the checklist, but what I'll say is when you're working on this, think he with your tongue and oh with your lips. So you can practice that without your clarinet. He <laughs> keep your tongue in heat. Again, you'll hear what it does to those high notes if I play with my corners back and I round them in. It's a much rounder, warmer, more resonant tone when I have those corners in. Now I'm not sure how much translates through the computer, but what I will say from my experience with students right here in my studio and my own playing, when those corners are in, it takes the edge off the high notes. It turns them from a sharp, brittle sound to a much warmer sound. It also will allow you to have much more flexibility with dynamics, so particularly for your highest notes. This rounding corners in is an important part of your tone checklist. There's a really handy tool that you can use just to kind of check to see if your embouchure is on the right track. And I call it the embouchure tester. And again, there's a link on the checklist to more details on it, but I'll give you the quick fingering for it right now. The embouchure tester is a fingering that's actually an alternate fingering to high G sharp at the top of the staff. It's thumb register key. First two fingers on the left hand. The key is we leave this finger off and then our next two fingers. It's a very unstable fingering for G sharp, and I hardly ever use it as a G sharp, but it's a great diagnostic tool. It's a fussy note. So ideally, if your embouchure is in the right shape and you're blowing with fast air, you'll hear a high G sharp. Now, often it doesn't. It'll give you something else. If it squeaks, which it will do very easily, then it probably means the corners of your mouth are not rounding in properly and you're compensating by <clears throat> biting down a bit. Biting's a bad habit that can lead to a pinch sound, so those corners in really helps us to counteract that. So if you squeak, round your corners in. Now the second most common 
sort of side effect of this G-sharp not working is you might hear a low undertone instead of the high G-sharp, something like this. That's really common too. And that indicates that your air speed is not fast enough, which we'll talk about on our next video. But for right now, you can still experiment with it. If you get the squeak away by rounding your corners in, then just know that you'll have to take your air from a slower air speed to a faster air speed. That was me going from slower air to faster air and it started to sound like a G sharp again. So that's a little tool that will help you. All right, the Clarinet Mentor's Tone Checklist. Please download the whole sheet and you'll see it is divided into sections. So I'm going to do a separate YouTube video for each section, but it's also a handy reference for you to print out because it will direct you to more detailed videos if you feel like any of these might be habits that you want to fine tune and improve for yourself. So stay tuned for more videos in this checklist, the next two videos I put up on YouTube will be directly related to this. Now, if you wanna find out about it right away, I invite you to join my Clarinet Mentors community. It's totally free to join. You simply go to www.learnclarinetnow.com and put in your name and email address. If it's not a good fit, you can unsign up very easily. But what I do is every couple weeks, I send out a video with a a newsletter with a video like today's where I share some of my favorite clarinet pointers to help you play clarinet more easily. And I'll also include information about fun clarinet products or recordings or other resources that might help you as well. So go ahead and sign up for that and you'll find out when part two and part three of our clarinet mentors tone video will be released. Thanks for watching today's video. I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to add your comments to the comments box just below this video.